back in the beginning of the century, pictures of sandstorms obscuring Beijing or North China often hit the headlines. But in recent years, the international discourse around China's environmental attempts has shifted dramatically as the Chinese government woke up to become one of the major pioneers of global greenery. Here are some figures. China's desertified areas see a decrease of 2,424 square kilometers every year, roughly three times the size of New York. Its sand-covered land goes down 1,980 square kilometers each year. In North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, forest coverage reached 22.1% in 2019, and the vegetation coverage of grasslands rose to 44%, four percentage points higher than in 2012. How did China get there, and what changed those swaths of barren sand into an oasis? First, planting trees, a lot of them. China's afforestation campaign can be dated back to the 1970s when the Three North Shelter Bed Forest Program was first implemented. Numerous local villagers and landscaping companies joined the project to hold back the sandstorms that are threatening people's survival. Six years ago, Ma Yufeng became a worker at a local forestation company. He never imagined he'd see the sandy landscape transform into a blanket of trees. This 86-year-old granny settled in a desert near her hometown Tongliao after retiring from a local bank. After 20 years of laboring on the degraded dry land, she successfully helped turn the sand dune into an oasis of 200,000 trees. During this process, many people voluntarily devoted themselves to a career of tree planting for the sake of bettering the lives of themselves and the next generations. For Ma Yunping, however, growing trees is a must because the sandstorms from the Oting Duck Sandy Land were burying his crops. Besides the massive tree planting project, the regional government in Inner Mongolia has also designated over 133,000 hectares of grasslands as protection areas over the past five years. To sustain local grasslands, grazing prohibitions are practiced in the fragile land, and conservation funding is allocated to families relying on husbandry. Er Hemu is a ranch owner in the Xilinguolo grassland. He owns about 80 cattle herding them in the 240-hectare rotational grassland from June to October, and raises them in the newly built cow shed he calls the Badjuman Kitchen for cattle. Although he no longer raises sheep, which may easily lead to overgrazing, his annual income has climbed steadily due to his high-quality cattle and stable beef prices. Chinese President Xi Jinping called for a solid green Great Wall while inspecting Inner Mongolia. 
He said building an ecological security barrier in northern China was a strategic task. Now, protection of the country's environment has been embedded in China's overall development strategy. After years of development, many people who have made contributions to the environment have benefited from Mother Nature in return, which showcased lucy waters and large mountains are invaluable assets. 当时的时候，我吃不着饭，穿不着，就是穿衣服啥的，得一年好几年我都没买过袜子。现在那么我可以买啥，想买啥就买啥，吃喝住都可以，这个啥这啥问题都没有了。现在有钱了，现在现在卖特殊卖十来万，没有再收入点，这不就哪年不收三四十万？ China has proven to the world that protecting the environment and pursuing economic benefits are dialectical but not contradictory. When managed with wisdom, they can form a virtuous cycle. If we say that the history cannot be turned into the gold and gold, it will change its economic structure. So we have to make sure that our infrastructure and farmer development and productivity are connected in a balanced and harmonious way. For many Chinese. Green initiatives are not only a key to a better of society, but also a commitment to the whole world.